everyone, uh, Kim from the library here in Dyersville and um, at my kitchen cooking again. Uh, this time we're going to do some breakfast options. The Teen Advisory Council had asked for some easy or interesting recipes to make for Mother's Day, but I picked some recipes that are good to make in advance if you are doing breakfast for your family midweek and you want a nice healthy breakfast for them um, that's pre-made or if you're cooking for a group on a well, not that we really do much with groups anymore, but these are some things that I used to do when I'd have company or family over for a weekend. Um, but now I do a lot of stuff and make it ahead and put it in the freezer. So these are some things that would lend well to that. I'm going to do three different things. We're going to do uh, breakfast bombs, which are uh, my son can attest to how much he's behind the camera there, how much he likes those. Um, he's nodding vigorously. And... I'm going to make sheet pan blueberry lemon pancakes. So instead of standing and flipping pancakes, Nora is going to be my assistant today. This is my daughter, Nora. Um, instead of flipping pancakes while everyone else is eating, you make these in a sheet pan and they're all done at the same time and you cut them in squares and eat them. So those are easy to do. And then um, we're gonna be making some pumpkin spiced granola. Uh, it's a healthier, low sugar, low fat version, uh, lower fat version. So. Um, we're going to be doing things in stages because I only have like, well, I have a double oven, but we're going to be doing things. And so there may be some jumping back and forth, but I'm trying to, going to try to just stick with one thing at a time. But to make the breakfast bombs, one of the things you need to do is either cook your bacon or your sausage. Now, if, if your family is meat free, of course, then you don't need to include bacon. That's one of the things with breakfast bombs. They're pretty forgiving. But I want to get my bacon in the oven so that when I make that recipe, the bacon is cooked because you pre-cook it and crumble it in this package that's going to come apart. But I wanted to share how my family makes bacon. Um, we do it on, sorry, I've got all my granola ingredients blocking the view here. Let's see it again. Thank you, Nora. No problem. It's the joy of assistant. They do all the hard, heavy lifting. Yeah, throw that away for mom. So I, you usually can get almost a full pan a pound of bacon on a sheet pan with a cookie cooling rack. Um, of course, you separate the bacon out and lay it. I tend, because I want to do a whole pound at a time, I will do a little bit of an overlap, but you want to give them as much air space as possible. Now, the reason I do this is A, I can get a whole pound pretty much done in one fell swoop. Um, and the other is it doesn't splatter my stove full of grease. And the other is my family, well, not my husband, but my children are fat phobes. They despise anything resembling fat or gristle <laughs> or connective tissue in their food. So bacon, of course, is notoriously fatty. But when you cook it in the oven like this, it gets deliciously crisp and renders all the fat out. Nora's nodding vigorously. Um, an agreement. Don't you love it when your children agree with you? They're approaching their teen years. I'm going to cherish every moment of agreement that I get. Um, so we're going to just squeeze all these in here. Now the ones that are on the pan itself um, will get done a whole lot faster. So what happens, what I'll do is I'll just keep an eye on these and then as the, they shrink, um, I'll put these up on the rack or pull them out sooner. So now this would go into a cold oven. Now that sounds weird, but what happens is as the oven warms up, the fat starts to melt and render out much more quickly. So I put, want to cook this at 400, but I haven't started my oven yet. So Nora, would you like to carry this over to the stove and then start the bottom oven at 400 and then put it in the bottom oven? So that will go into the, a cold oven. I put it in the oven, put it in the bottom oven, babe. And then um, turn the oven on to 400. And then as the oven preheats, it starts to cook the bacon. So it, after it's in there, uh, it's say 15 minutes at 400, you'll see what the end result is. So I'm gonna just make sure she gets that. Um, bake, 400, and then bake again. Okay, now I'm gonna get the baking grease off my fingers because we don't want that in our granola. And you don't ever, anytime you touch meat, of course, anytime you touch meat, you want to wash your hands, um, soap and water, because, you know, meat, meat cooties. All right, so um, recognizing that people 
have different dietary needs. Some people are vegetarian, some people are vegan. Um, this next recipe is actually a vegan recipe, so it can be made for anybody. Um, and even if you're not vegan, it's delicious. All right, so first thing, I'm gonna just go through the list of ingredients. Um, it's a kind of a long list, but we're making granola. Um, now granola can be really bad for you. It sounds like it's healthy, but um, it usually is full of a lot of sugar and a lot of fat. So this is a lower sugar, lower fat recipe. Um, I got it off a of skinny taste and kind of adapted it to my taste. So skinnytaste.com, a woman's best friend website here. So the first thing you're gonna, you're gonna need quinoa and oats. oats. I use old fashioned oats. Um, those things are the what you're gonna process with first. The rest of the recipe includes pecans. Again, you can use walnuts, almonds, you can sub out your nuts. Um, seeds, I'm using pumpkin seeds. These are salted because it's what I could get in town. And flax seeds. Gra ground flax seed. Now I have ground flax seed on hand, but you can put it down, hun. You can um, buy whole ground, whole flax seed, and then grind it. Pumpkin seeds. These I prefer raw, but salted was what was available, so I'll adjust the salt in my recipe. Um, I'm using avocado oil, pumpkin puree. Now my my son will say that we have some in the freezer from his cart garden, and we do, but I didn't get it defrosted in time, which is bad, bad planning on my part. Vanilla. Um, this is my homemade vanilla, so I make my own vanilla. Uh, ground cinnamon, um, which is over here. Pumpkin pie spice, salt, maple syrup, and cranberries. Now, dried cranberries. Now, the dried fruit, you can use whatever dried fruit you want. I actually have in my container here... Dried um, blueberries. I'm going to use some a combination of dried blueberries and dried cranberries because I want to use these guys up. So they're going to go bye-bye today. Um, dried cherries are really good, um, but cranberry and pumpkin go really well together. And we actually have a cat trying to help us. We have a new kitten, and he hasn't learned counter etiquette yet. Um, Nora, could you please remove the, the cat? <laughs> and all of my fruit and nuts are down at the other end of the island. Please, Ian, don't show the mess. All right, so we're going to get started with uh, the beginning of this recipe, which is a quarter cup of quinoa. And what we're going to do, I'm going to have my able assistant... He was in search of food. Now he's eating on the window seat, so don't, you don't need to show that. A quarter cup of quinoa. Um, quinoa are little tiny grains. Um, it's, it's, they're an ancient grain, and my, um, my uh, strainer is actually a little small for them. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to wash those. I'm going to give a little extra because we're going to lose some down the sink here. We're going to wash them, and then we'll dry them on the paper towel. So, Nora, you want to run some cold water there. And, all right, that's probably good. Okay. All right, so then we're going to dry those well on the paper towel. And I love quinoa. I love cooking with it. I love eating it. The thing is, it, it's so tiny, and it just scatters everywhere. So it's kind of a pain in the butt, but it is, I shouldn't say that, should I? It's kind of a pain in the keister um, to deal with, but it is it is tasty stuff. I love putting it in salads and, and, and things like that. So, okay, so you want a pretty dry. Could you get me another paper towel, baby? And, and of course, I got quinoa all over my counter. <laughs> we'll clean that up later. But you want this really dry because it's going to go in the oven. So, and to toast. And wet things don't toast. They steam, but we want it toasty because that adds more flavor. Okay, so I think with this, we're going to put some parchment sheet paper on our on my cooking my sheet pan here. You now you notice a lot of uh, what I cook with them is our sheet pan. So parchment paper keeps things from sticking to your pan without adding oil. So. And it likes to curl up, so I crumple it, and then you open it up, and then it lays flat. All right, and you get that in your sheet pan, and then we'll get our quinoa in there. Nora, would you like to measure out uh, one and a half cups of oats to put on here? Okay. Okay, we'll put the quinoa on. And this will go in the oven to toast for 10 minutes. 
Put it on the pan, honey. Let's see, we got one over half. Okay, so just do two more, just do two more of those, that's fine. Okay, so you want it spread out in a nice thin layer. See the quinoa sticks to the paper towel. Okay. So we're gonna do one more scoop of half cup of oats. I'm gonna try to get some of these quinoa seeds off the counter here because they're gonna drive me nuts. And we're doing a dance, Nora. Do si do and around we go. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so once you put the lid on the oats, we don't need that anymore. And get the quinoa out of here before it spills any further. Okay, so that's gonna be good, get spread out. I'm gonna pull this over. Spread out in an even layer on the pan. And that's gonna toast at 325. Um, that's gonna go in the upper. I think it beeped. It's at 325. Um, for 10 minutes. And we'll stir it, we'll stir it about five minutes in. So here, I'm just gonna slide it in. Do you wanna set the timer for five minutes and then we'll stir it? Okay. So um, then we're gonna kind of assemble our the rest of our ingredients. Um, once um, timer, yeah, timer five zero zero. And then hit timer again. There you go. All right, so we'll get, we'll get the other parts of this ingredients together. So in 10 minutes, that will come out of the oven, and then we're going to add, I should have had my bowl out, but I ran out of counter space. We're going to get our bowl out. Okay, so the other things that are going to go into this, um, we're going to combine um, maple syrup, our pumpkin puree, our spices, and um, let's see, I'm going to need my can opener here. All right, and then we get our spatula. Okay, so in this bowl, we're going to add, would you like to get the liquid measuring cup, Laura? I'm sorry. Would you like to measure out a quarter cup of maple syrup? Thank you. Okay. All right, I'm gonna open a can of pumpkin puree. Use whatever you'll have on hand. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I usually have some in the freezer and it's a little thinner consistency, so it works a little bit better, but we'll make this work. Um, because the other stuff is frozen solid, so it's not going to be any good. <laughs> All right, just pour that in the bowl, babe. Okay. And then we're going to need um, a quarter cup of pumpkin puree. Look at my recipe here. So I'm going to do something else with this pumpkin. I'm going to add a little. Uh, no, it'll get too wet. I'll do something else with that pumpkin. I'll need my spatula here. Okay, Nora, would you like to measure out a teaspoon of the pumpkin pie spice? One teaspoon. Okay. We'll have this ready to go for the other ingredients when they're done in the oven. Okay. Okay. And here. So. One teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice and we're going to add um, a little extra cinnamon. Now pumpkin pie spice has cinnamon in it but you know you can never have too much cinnamon. Well you can but it's not very often. <laughs> yeah that's true. Put that back on push it down. Okay then you can go on the back counter we'll put those away when we have a break. Okay, now my pumpkin seeds are to are already salted, but I'm still going to add just a little bit of salt to this. Salt makes everything better. <laughs> well, too much is bad for you, though. Mm -hmm. um, so how I make my uh, vanilla, I did this uh, in 20, uh, January of 20. I did whole vanilla beans. I split them and then added vodka. I have some rum also. And I think for this, we're going to use um, use half a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. But this is what my vanilla looks like. You can see that. You can see the little vanilla seeds floating around in there. I'm going to add a little extra because it's good stuff. It really smells good. Okay. I'm going to put that on the back. We're going to need it for the pump. We're going to need it for the pancakes. So we'll leave that. Put that syrup back there too. We're getting stuff out of the way here. Mm -hmm. All right. And a pinch. Did I do this pinch of salt, Ian? Yes. Okay. So we'll get the salt out of here. All right. And um, this just is a teaspoon of oil. It's not much. Here it is. 
I'm using, you can use coconut oil or canola oil. I'm using avocado um, because I like it. <laughs> That's what I have on hand. So uh, coconut oil is um, solid at room temperature, so you have to melt it, and so that's one extra step that I don't want to deal with. All right, so we're just going to stir that up. Pumpkin-y goodness. Smells good. <laughs> Smells like pumpkin pie? Okay. All right, so we're just going to have to wait for um, the oats and stuff to come out. We'll add the rest of our, our ingredients, which will be the pecans, the dried fruit, the pumpkin seeds and the ground flax seed. But we're gonna stop the video right now for just a minute while I assemble some other ingredients to start the pancakes. So we'll take a break for just a second here. So while we were on that little hiatus there, <laughs> I stirred the oats and quinoa in the oven. They've got another couple minutes. We're gonna assemble the rest of the dry ingredients for the granola. So we have a quarter cup of ground flax seed. These recipes will be available at the library. We're gonna do one and a half um, or half a cup of dried fruit. So we'll see how many blueberries we have here. I actually like cranberries a little bit better with um, pumpkin flavor, but these little blueberries are so cute. So we're gonna do half and half. I guess I'm not using up the blueberries. Guys, you're gonna have some in oatmeal. All right, so I'm gonna put the lid on that more and take it to the back counter. Okay. Thank you. And we're gonna do uh, half a quarter cup of the chopped pecans. Now I got lazy and bought chopped pecans and I'll add a few extra because hey, chopped pecans. Um, normally I would chop my own pecans, but I figure you guys have seen people chopping things. You don't need to see me chopping. Um, and then the pepitas. Now that's a big fancy word for pumpkin seeds. And as I said, these are pre-salted. You can get them unsalted, which is probably healthier, but this is what I could get in town. I have some unsalted ones, but they had sat too long and they, um, the thing with pumpkin seeds and flax seed um, and nuts for that matter, they all have oils in them. So if they sit too long, they go rancid. So what you can do is you can make a giant batch or whatever you're making with them and then freeze it. Um, granola freezes very well, but if you leave it sit out for too long, it will go rancid. So you definitely want to... Um, eat it, which is usually not a problem. Okay, no, you don't need to open the bacon, or if you hear the bacon sizzling, it's sizzling away there. So we're gonna get our oats and we're gonna add them to this. Excuse me. And while I'm at the stove, I'm gonna turn this down to 300 because we're gonna bake the rest of it, the rest of the granola at 300 degrees. Okay, so the, the oats and quinoa have gotten all toasty and brown. Lots of flavor in, in toasty, toasty things. I'm gonna just hold this one up more. Okay, I'm gonna dump that in. Okay, watch your little hands, stir that up there. Okay. We'll use the same pan after we add everything together. Okay, so we're gonna stir. Let's see how that looks. You wanna make sure everything's well combined. And I like to combine the dry stuff really well and then we'll add the wet. Okay, so I reduced the oven to 300. Now I should use a smaller bowl for this, but here, you start stirring when I add it, okay? Now what we're gonna do with this granola, of course you can have it with milk as a cereal, but granola is, you know, if you're not worried about calories, you can eat the whole thing, but when you're, my age and my size, and a lot of moms are concerned about calories. Um, you don't want a huge quantity of it. Here, let's just... Um, it's, it's more of a condiment. So what I like to do with granola, mm, 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 just get all happy thinking about it, is I layer with fresh fruit and yogurt. Now, I like plain Greek yogurt. Other people's mileage may vary. If your mom or anybody else in your family likes vanilla yogurt, this, um, there's a seasonal yogurt made by a couple of different um, yogurt companies of caramel yogurt. It's so good, I use it to dip my apples in. Um, that would go really good with this flavor. Um, vanilla, as I said. Um, I would stay away from like a real fruity yogurt. Um, the plainer yogurts, because there's so much flavor in this with the pumpkin pie spice. 
it can clash with something. I would never put lemon yogurt with it. Um, <laughs> just do those. Um, but, you know, whatever you like. Um, it makes a good topping for, um, uh, like I said, a yogurt parfait. If you layer it, you can just top yogurt with it. If you want to top ice cream with it, it's really good. Then you have like a pumpkin pie flavored um, vanilla ice cream. Um, so anyway, all right, so we're going to get our pan back over here, Nora, you want to watch your little fingers, you don't want to burn them. It's still hot. I have a, my island is around, so it can take a little heat. And we're just going to spread it out here. Now this will go into a 300 oven, Nora, what does the recipe say? How long does it go in? Um. At 300 it goes in for? Uh. Until golden or 20 minutes, I think. Okay, so 20 minutes. We're going to spread it out here. Mm -hmm. Get some of that puree in there. It just, can you guys say how it smells? Can you smell it? I can't from back here. We'll get it up closer to you. It smells maple-y and pumpkin pie-y and <laughs> yep. delicious. And it makes two and two-thirds cups. So, so yeah, if you have a bigger family, you may want to double the recipe. That's, you know, I, I have, I don't know how many, how many sheet pans I have. Um, anyway. Okay, that's still too hot to touch. Okay. Give it a little shake. All right, so it's going to go in the oven um, for about 20 minutes or until golden. And I like to check it and stir it periodically. Um, not or stir it once or twice and get this came off my hand. Okay, so that is the um, granola pretty much done. Um, and we'll show it with some yogurt and show you how that looks. We're going to stop here, get our stuff together for pancakes, and I'll check on the bacon for the breakfast bombs. Hi. <laughs> hi, hi everyone. So our next item on our agenda are, is blueberry pancakes. I've preheated my oven to 425. I basically just turned, the bacon is still cooking, so just turned that up. It's fine at 425, it'll just cook a little faster. I have to watch it really carefully. So these are lemon blueberry sheet pan pancakes. We need uh, all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, salt, baking powder, baking soda, granulated sugar. I use raw sugar, so it's, it's dark brown. It's not brown sugar. It's just not bleached um, I have my, for my lemon here. Um, eggs, buttermilk, my vanilla, blueberries, melted butter. And I think that's everything. We need the zest and the juice of the lemon. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we do things with zesting a lemon if you've never done that. Um, you can leave the zest out, but it certainly is a, a really yummy part of it. So the first thing we're going to do is prep our pan. You need a, a sheet pan. Yay, sheet pans. And we're going to spray it with a cooking spray. And we are going to use the parchment paper again. Now, if you do not have parchment paper, um, you could just use the spray, but it won't come out as easily. These do get a little sticky in the oven because um, there's sugar in it, and sugar, when it gets hot, caramelizes, and when things caramelize, they stick. So there, there is that. So then a candy part of paper, and then we're going to spray it again. And so then our, our pan is prepped. All right, so you just want to set that back there. All right, now we're going to get to our dry ingredients. So we're going to start with our flour, um, all-purpose flour. Now, how you do all-purpose flour is very important. Um, most recipes, I bake my own bread, uh, you go by weight, because then it doesn't matter how hard you pack flour down. So the best way to get an accurate measurement of flour is to scoop it and scrape it, right? So you scoop it into the cup, rather than digging your cup in, because that packs the flour down. I love recipes that give you the weight, because then it doesn't matter. If it says five ounces of flour, then it's five ounces of flour. And it doesn't matter how hard it's packed. So what do we need? We need one and a half cups of this. There's one. And a half cup. Scoop. Scoop and scrape. Scoop and scrape. Okay. And then we need um, a half a cup. Is it a half a cup? 
of whole wheat flour. Where's my opening here? Half a cup of whole wheat. That's my oven telling me it's at 425. Okay. So there's our whole wheat flour. All right. And these are out of there. Now our next ingredient we're going to add is two tablespoons of sugar. Two tablespoons of sugar. So Nora's going to add that. Okay. Good deal. All right. Now how much salt do we need? Um, two tablespoons. Wait, no. One teaspoon. One teaspoon of salt. Where'd my teaspoon measure? I'm gonna grab another one. Again, multiple multiple measuring devices. So one teaspoon salt. We're gonna whisk all this together. Um, okay. And then, how much baking powder? Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of baking powder. Baking powder gives it its uh, pancakes their lift, makes them nice and fluffy. How much baking soda, dear heart? Um. One teaspoon. Okay. Now, if you don't do a lot of cooking, always check the expiration date on your baking powder and baking soda. Most of them have a date. Um, I have to take my glasses off to read because I'm old. Um, so this one says, best if used by November 2021. I will be through that well before that. But if, if your stuff, if your baking powder and baking soda have expired, then your pancakes will be hard, little sad. Flat Hard things. Hard, no, no fluff. No fluff. No fluff. Okay. So, and we got our salt, right? I like to set the things I use off to the side so I know I've used them. All right. So that's our dry. So we're going to move Nora. Would you like to very carefully put that on the mm -hmm. back counter? And this one. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to move on to the wet ingredients. Now you don't want to dump the wet ingredients straight into the dry for a couple of reasons. Um, for one thing, we're using buttermilk, which is an acid, and it will react with the baking powder and make it poof. And if you haven't done the rest of your ingredients, then you lose all your all your air and volume by mix by premature mixing. Also, you don't want to overmix pancakes. Um, bread when, or flour when you stir it forms gluten, and um, you don't want high gluten pancakes or pancakes with a lot of gluten because then they're tough and hard to chew. You want them tender and Delicious. All right, so let's, um, okay, so we're going to get our buttermilk in first, okay. All right, so we're using buttermilk. We need two cups of buttermilk. Um, and let's get out an, a bowl to crack the eggs into. And Nora, do you want to get a, 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 you can, a plate and you can do the eggs? All right, so we're going to do, I believe it's two cups of buttermilk. Um, the buttermilk again gives them lift when it reacts the acid in the buttermilk reacts with the um, baking soda and baking powder but buttermilk also it tends to make things tender so I have my measuring cup is there we go okay oh, oh, that's okay that's fine there wasn't an egg in it so that's a win <laughs> there's no egg in it that's a win all right so we'll put that guy back there now one of the things I like to make is um, pumpkin pancakes. Okay, so you make sure there's no shell in that egg, baby girl. Yep. And then you can add it, um, you can take a little fork. Did you get it all? Here, what are you doing, sweetie? <laughs> all right, I don't know what you're doing. I don't want eggs again. I know, but it's hard to come out that little hole. Okay, so we're going to beat that guy up a little bit and put him in. Okay, now you do the other one, crack it in the middle. Yeah, here you go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There you go. And then you can measure off the vanilla, Nora. I'm going to stir the granola real quick here. I lost my spoon for a granola. We'll get another one. And if your granola, now I'm stirring it up a little bit here. Um, if it still feels wet, it is not done. So we're going to... All right, that's good. You can pour that in. Okay. okay. And then no, we'll, we'll, the let's hear it. Let's, there you go. Is, wait, Mother is my hand. She did eggs, so she's washing her hands like a good little germaphobe. I'm going to dump her eggshells here. Is 
safe than sorry. Yeah, that's right. Better safe than sorry. All right, we're going to add um, vanilla. How much vanilla? Here, I can... It's two teaspoons vanilla. In the meantime, I'm going to zest my lemon. Now, I have this as a zester. Um, this is a small lemon. You really... I'm probably going to do two. And you don't want to get any of the white part of the lemon rind. You just want the yellow. So you don't... You just scrape it over the top of the lemon. Don't go deep on this, okay? Um, if I act, if I look like I'm lurching around, it's because I have dogs and a, do a dog and cats that like to dance around my feet when I'm cooking because sometimes magic happens and things fall on the floor, and then you know life is good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do that's not very that was a small little lemon, so here's a big guy, and I wash these and let them dry so they're good. You always want to wash your stuff before you. Put it in your food because you don't know what bugs been crawling on it or who picked it and didn't wash their hands you know <laughs> just just saying it smells lemony it smells lemony because these are lemon blueberry pancakes all right now that's going in there all right we're gonna put this over here and then we're going to juice the lemon okay so we're gonna use nora this we'll use that yeah okay but sweet uh, sweetie we always put our lid on our vanilla because if we knock it over, it's a, a tragedy of epic major proportions. Disaster. A major disaster. So we're going to slice our lemon and juice it. So it, um, I want... Some lemons are juicier than others. I want a good couple tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm going to do... That was a small lemon. So I'm going to do just part of this bigger lemon here. You want these to be lemony because they're good with maple syrup, but they're also really good with whipped cream. And when you have whipped cream on something and it's lemony, it's so delightful. All right, so there's our lemon. And I'm going to steal the whisk here and whisk it. Okay, and a quarter cup water, Nora? Yep. Okay. And that's getting all whiskey, and it smells really yummy, delightful. doesn't it? it smells delightful. <laughs> Okay, and we're going to, um, do we add our blueberries? Where do we add our blueberries? Yep. I'm sorry, this recipe is a new one for me. Yep, okay, that's what I thought. Okay, sorry. Sorry for the... The gap there. We have to do our butter Hesitation. more. Hesitation. We have to do our butter. Oh, forgot. I guess. Okay, that's okay. Do you want to put this in the sink then, please? Okay. All right. Then we combine them. And again, we just want to whisk until, um, or stir it until it's just lightly. We don't want to overmix this, guys. So we're going to pour that in. Just wait more. Please don't wait now. Your hand's moving in there, and this pouring is not a good combination. Okay, and actually, I'm going to have you carry that over. Try not to drip gently. Okay, so. Yep, you can stir a little bit. Okay. Um, I don't really like using the whisk for this. It doesn't matter if there's... We're going to stop the whisk, or I don't like that. Um, yeah, it sticks. It clumps in the middle. And then you lose half your ingredients in the middle of your whisk. It's really, and then when you try to poke it out, it flies all over the room because flour. Flour, yep, because flour. Flour is just flour. Yeah, and this is not something we want the dog eating either. So, all right. Yep. Actually, you know, a lot of people think that it's the eggs and cookie dough that's bad for you. I'm just gonna do my little germ spiel here. Actually, flour causes more salmonella poisoning than eggs do raw flour so you always want to make sure your flour is cooked no matter how good something smells if there's raw flour in it try not to eat it okay okay this is just not happening here this is why i don't like misks, whisks and pancakes okay you want to put that in the sink please okay. goes all over when you try to use a spatula so we're just going to stir now i don't want big clumps of flour but if there's streaks that's fine um they'll stir out so you, you just or they'll bake out so you just want to stir it until it's just combined. I always want to make sure there's no big globs on the bottom. All right, then we are adding our blueberries and we're gonna just kind of fold those in. Now these are 
giant blueberries. I actually prefer the small ones because they spread out better. Yeah. Um, but do you see how this is foaming up? I wish you could hear it. It's You could hear the foam. It's like bubbling up. And that's the acid combining. Here you go. From the lemon as well and the buttermilk. Okay, here you go. So we're gonna pour it in to our pan. Can we use this to spread it out? Yeah, just a minute, Mama, because this is really heavy. No, you can use this one. Here, take it. Okay, I have a butt, butt beeper going off. Um, on Fridays, here, sorry. On Fridays, you want to shut that off? I cook uh, a week's worth of meals for some relatives who um, and friends who um, are single or um, my it's grandpa. Done. Okay. So, oh my goodness, the bacon is way done. Okay. We're going to take the bacon out. This is crispy bacon. Oh, you guys will like it. There's no fat on this. Okay, we'll watch it. Okay. I'll show it. I would have actually liked the bacon a little less done because um, it's going to get cooked again. Okay, so we're going to spread this out. And like I said, sadly, because the blueberries are giant, it doesn't get everywhere. So you don't taste that blueberry, those blueberries to everybody. So you just want to kind of make them sure they're spread out a little bit. You can always add more. There's never such no such thing as too much blueberry. Okay, so that's going to go in the oven door for how long? Um, for, uh, let me, <laughs> about 15 minutes. Okay, so we're going to set the timer for that one. And we're going to check our granola while we're over here. Starting to get crispy, I think another couple minutes. Okay, so we're going to let that crisp up for another two minutes. Um, timer. Okay. All right, so we have our pancakes in the oven. We have our granola in the oven. We're going to move on to breakfast bombs. I'm going to have Ian stop the camera and we're going to get some things assembled for that. Okay, we're here to assemble the breakfast bombs. We're going to take a nine inch pan and spray it with spray. I'm going to do this over here because I don't want to get it on my island because it never comes off. Grease on a black granite countertop is just a bad deal. Okay, so you open this, uh, usually use a spoon, but I like to use my fingernail. Um, and you're going to take your biscuits out and separate them. Some of them are in better shape than others and they weren't happy with their confinement. All right, so you're going to have eight biscuits and dispose of this. So then you um, just flatten them out. Now you want them about like that. They will puff up and then you you start putting your filling in. Now, like I said, you can do, um, you can add some chives, you could add chopped onion, chopped pepper. There's all sorts of things to add to this. It's totally up to you. No, no we're not gonna go out in the dark now. We have chive outside, but we don't need it. These are for my kids, so they aren't big veggie fans with their breakfast. I eat veggies for breakfast, but. And then you're going to kind of just wrap it up. And if you overfill, then you just take some out, which I just did. I do the same thing with tacos. I overfill tacos. All right. You wanna... So you're going to wrap these up. This always goes so much better when you're not being filmed. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. Oh, you know, no, you have to flatten it, Nora. Okay, I'm going to flatten this guy again. He is not flat enough. That, I think, is my problem. Not cooperating. Well, and you could use a rolling pin, but this really usually goes much slicker. I've made these before, and that's never been a problem. Okay, there we go. You want to make sure it's pinched together. You don't want your stuff leaking out. Okay. Uh, yeah, you might want that flatter, but... And these freeze and reheat well too. So, okay, so there you go. And you want to make sure it's pinched tight. Okay, and I like to give it a little roll. 
make sure everything's sealed up, and then it goes in the pan. Cheese or bacon? Um, let's see, you want that flat, way flatter. You're not going to get However you want to make it, babe. You can do... There you go. Okay, so I'm going to flatten that out. The dog is ever hopeful down by my feet. Okay, a little bit of egg. You eat anything that drops. Now, to serve any of this, any of this food, um, you want to make it pretty. Um, you could um, serve a couple of these or one of these with some fresh fruit, um, grapes, cut up melon. Um, we have we have flowers. We have a little flower vase. You know, you can make it pretty. Um, there's with the granola, as I said, if you layer it, if you have a, a pretty glass and layer it, it looks really nice. Um, I don't think tonight we're getting kind of late. I don't think we're going to get the granola layered. The granola is done, but I'm mm. gonna, maybe later tomorrow I can. Mm. Yep. I'll, yeah, I think that's too full. I need oh. to, we'll, we'll see. That's fine. Okay. And then give it a little roll. Okay, that guy's done. All right, so you just keep doing that. Um, and as you go along, it gets a little bit less tedious. Okay, Nora, do you want to shut the bottom oven off? Because I'm pretty sure those pancakes are done. Um, these are really good with um, just with bottom oven shut. Just shut it off. Cancel. Yeah, there you go. Cancel. That works. Okay. Lost my get in there egg. Pinch it together. There you go. And roll. Alright, now these will puff up a little when they are. Um, so when you spray it, or if you want to do melted butter on top, you could sprinkle it. Like I said, I'm gonna use everything bagel seasoning. You could sprinkle it with some granulated garlic or onion. Um, not real heavy, because you know, hey, it's morning, you don't want mom. Or your family smelling like onion first thing too bad. Um, hopefully we're gonna brush the teeth after breakfast, but you never know what can happen. Um, but fresh fruit's always a good accompaniment. With the pancakes, we're gonna pull those out here in just a second. And I'll show you what those look like. Then you cut them in squares. They can also be frozen. So you guys can make this stuff ahead. Um, have a hot breakfast. Death, death to uh, toaster pastries. Names shall not be named. <laughs> um, you can have a hot breakfast by just making these things and freezing them. This guy is looking a little thin on this side. <laughs> Emergency surgery. Oh, no. He might go seam side up. I don't know what happened there. All right. Well, we're just going to leave him seam side up. I'm not going to mess with him too much more. We don't want to... Okay. All right. Um... You could do these vegetarian, you know, if you're vegan too. Um, there is such a thing as, you know, vegan cheese. Um, and you could do tofu in it. I would cook my tofu first or strain it because you don't want to have, um, I think these would be really good with like brie. <laughs> I'm, I'm big, I love cheese, so that's, you know, that's me. Chunk A little chunk of brie and maybe some a, a, a really good thick jam in the biscuit. Our cameraman um, also likes cheese, so <laughs> we always have it around the house. Yeah, that I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, roll him. Okay, Nora, let's see what we can do with yours here. I think we may have to. Okay. I don't know. I think we're going to have to maybe split him up with somebody else. <laughs> But I have frozen the breakfast bombs and um, made them, you know, just reheat them in the microwave in the morning. Um, the pancakes, which are probably done, um, serve those. Okay, get back to serving those. <laughs> uh, you can serve those with whipped cream, more blueberries on top. Um, you could serve them with maple syrup, some powdered sugar, um, whichever, whatever you want. I'm just going to get in here with my fingers now. I don't need to look pretty. just need to get these in the oven. And these will bake at 375 for 20 to 25 minutes. Um, and then you take them out, obviously. 
And, oh, keep the cat off the counter, please. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Like I said, he's new. He just, we just got him out of a shelter. And he doesn't understand yet the rules of the house. He just smells bacon and hay. Who doesn't love bacon? Who doesn't love bacon? And I think he's ready for his bedtime snack, too. He's a kitten. He's growing. Ian, look at You're going to have some leftover... Um, I eggs for the morning. Have to cook them. I cook them a little bit more, though. Well, by the time you reheat them, honey, they will be they will be well and truly. They'll be like the bacon. <laughs> they'll be a good pair: the crumbled bacon and the and dried up eggs. Disintegrating <laughs> eggs. Okay. All right. So we're pinching you closed. We just have one exploded bomb. Okay, and we're going to roll him. All right, now here's, we got a little bit. Try it. No, it's crispy. Okay, so we're going to spray these. Now, normally you could use melted butter. I okay, this is going to drive me nuts. But we're just going to use spray today. And then I make my own everything bagel seasoning, but you can get it at um, stores. Let's get the flowers out of the way here. You can get it at um, most grocery stores have it. Can you, want, you want to sprinkle some? Yeah. It's sesame seeds and granulated garlic and onion and poppy seeds and some salt. Um, every recipe is a little different. I like them. I like there's pepper it. in there? I don't think there's pepper in there. Poppy seeds and lots of other savory, delicious things. Mm. Uh, sesame seeds, did I say those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Then they go in a 375 oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Um, we're going to keep the camera on because we're going to show you the granola and the um, pancakes. Nora, do you want to put the salt and pepper on, in there a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay, watch the baby. Whoa, whoa, hot stuff coming through. Okay, so this is the pancake. Now you'd slice that in squares. Oh, 16. You can see the blueberries, and they smell extremely lemony. Mm -hmm. Can I try a little taste test? Oh, no, Nora, you shut the wrong oven off. Oh, Phil. Uh, let's see, bake. Hi. That's okay. We still have an oven on. That's why I have a double oven. All right. There we go. Okay. Now oh, they'll get done. All right. So, um, granola. This is good. Why don't you use a knife to cut it? Okay. Watch I'm just going to have a little piece. So here's the granola. You see how it is crispy? Um, you can hear the crisp. And you don't you don't want it wet. You would store this in an airtight container. Um, and it tastes like pumpkin pie. It's delicious. A little hand coming out for a sample here. So I have these uh, tulip glasses. Things taste better when they're in something that's pretty. It's hot. I'm gonna get my yogurt out here. Buried at the back of the refrigerator. So you would just, um, I would like myself, I think a diced apple would be good in this. Um, now, this is plain yogurt. Um, I like unsweetened yogurt, but um, and with nothing in it. But even if you had plain yogurt at home, you could mix a little vanilla, a little bit of honey in it, or maple syrup, and a little bit of granola. Some yogurt. And then if you had fresh fruit in there, um, you know, you have blueberries left over from your pancakes. A little more granola and some yogurt. And just a little bit on top and a little bit of fresh fruit. And so, or some fresh fruit on the side. And of course, because I am a kitchen geek or a kitchen nerd, we've got long spoons to eat things without the tall glasses. 
So that's the, the granola. Again, you could just have it as a cereal. And then the pancakes, you would slice in squares if you didn't have uh, neighborhood vultures uh, consuming them. Now, again, if you want to do these ahead of time, you would um, slice them and cool them, and then you could put them in a freezer bag or a freezer container and uh, put them in, in a freezer. Um, they would be okay in the refrigerator. Um, why don't you get out, um, let's see. One piece is want... kind of uneven. We had a taste test. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, we'll even that guy up. Sorry. But let's get, a, let's get a plate out and we'll scoop some up and they can see what it looks like on the inside. We'll get a piece that's not been scavenged. Maybe this? No, really, that's fine. So, there you go. And then you could serve that with, um, I would eat it with a dollop of Chobani, or do, I should mean names, a dollop of yogurt. You could do maple syrup, a little bit of powdered sugar, some fresh fruit on the side on a bigger plate. You mm -hmm. could do some bacon on the side of it. Mm -hmm. um, bacon with it. Sausage, if your mama likes sausage or if your family likes sausage. And the breakfast bombs, we'll take a picture of those when they come out. And um, as I said, the recipes will be available at the library. Um, I don't know that I'll put them on the website, but they'll be available to pick up. Um, we can do it by a curbside or the next time you're in. Um, I'm not real comfortable putting recipes out because some of these I've, I've changed a little bit from other people's recipes. I just don't want to get in trouble for, for that. So um, anyway, if you have any questions, I'm available too. So, and um, uh, could you do the... Breakfast bombs with the pancake? That would be maybe a little much because that's a lot of bread, but yeah. to each their own. Um, I think my son's planning on having everything tomorrow morning for breakfast. So, <laughs> you know, it's your breakfast. You do with it what you want. Thank you very much. We'll uh, be back when the breakfast bombs are done to take a picture of those. Hi, okay, babe. everybody. We're here for breakfast bombs. Now I'm cracking six eggs into a bowl. We're going to make scrambled eggs. I'm going to assume that, um, that you... No one know how to make scrambled eggs. Do I want to get the salt and pepper, please? Oh, okay. Um, and I'm going to give some instruction on that. So what we need for breakfast bombs are jumbo biscuits, uh, six eggs, three tablespoons of milk, shredded cheese. I strongly recommend you shred your own cheese. You can buy the pre-shredded cheese, and that is fine, but it's coated in a potato starch, so it doesn't like to melt. It tends to just kind of stay in shreds a, a little bit more. We like peppery eggs. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna make some scrambled eggs. Normally when I make my own scrambled eggs, um, or just to eat as scrambled eggs, I don't add milk. But I think that in this application, uh, you add a tablespoon of milk for two eggs because um, it helps, they're gonna get baked in a biscuit, so it helps keep them a little moist. So, and when we scramble them, we're not going to overcook them. Yeah, well, let's use a whisk, baby. I was thinking about one of those forks in the No, this is fine. Okay, so we're going to whisk, and you want to whisk. Um, when I make scrambled eggs, you want to make sure that the eggs, you don't want it like this. I don't. <laughs> anyway, you want the yolk and the white to blend together. To blend together. Um, for one thing, they cook more evenly because white, egg whites cook more slowly than egg yolks. So if you get them all mixed up, then it cooks at the same temperature. I have a pan on medium heat, a nonstick pan, but I did spray, um, I did spray some uh, cooking spray in it. All right, then I've got my super duper crispy bacon. Um, <laughs> I would not recommend letting it go that far. I've got three things going at once, and that's... So what I was starting to tell you before was when I cook on Fridays for my grandfather and other family members, I usually do three or four entrees, sometimes a breakfast option and various sides, a week's worth of meals. And um, when I'm multitasking like that, something always gets forgotten. So something always gets a little overdone, um, but they're very generous and very um, forgiving of the overcooked food that occasionally comes their way. Um, I in just 
this case it was the bacon. In this case, the bacon is slightly incinerated. But since I'm making it for my family and not giving it to anyone else, that's okay because this is actually how they like their bacon. Um, you know, I think it looks like it just made it through a California wildfire um, on the wrong end of the California wildfire. Um, but there it is. And this is how my kids like their bacon. I'm having a hard time keeping them out of it. So we're going to put this in the pan, and Nora's going to scramble them. Um, Ian, why don't you come around this way? We can use a spatula. Here, I can scramble eggs. But you're filming. Oh, no, I can film. You don't want to get the camera in the egg. So you, you put them in the pan, make sure the pan is preheated, and then you kind of let them set for a second, and then you run your spatula through. Okay. And you want, now for this, my son, much like his bacon, likes his eggs cooked to... <laughs> <laughs> cook, um, when you overcook eggs the proteins kind of shrink up and they squeeze all the moisture out of them so they get dry and hard and just kind of gross but that's the way he likes them um, I think he cuts the dryness by adding shredded cheese on top but we're gonna um, not over scramble our eggs today now you don't want them wet they're gonna go in biscuits but and they cook pretty fast too Yep, they do. Um, my son, Ian, has been cooking his own scrambled eggs since fifth grade, Ian. Yep, fifth yeah. grade. Yep. All right, so now this, if you were French, this would be just about right. Um, but, but again, I'm cooking for my family, so we're going to make them a little drier. Um, and they will continue to cook a little bit in the pan, and they are going to cook in the oven also. So I'm going to stop there. They would think this is too wet to eat just plain scrambled eggs, but they're gonna go in a they're gonna go in a biscuit. So we're gonna let those sit for a minute. We're gonna spread our biscuits out so and chop our bacon. So we want eight slices of bacon incinerated bacon. <laughs> we're gonna maybe up that just a little bit here because they are oh that's too black. I'm sorry, I'm not putting that in anything. We'll give that to them. my husband, it's kind of funny. My kids like their bacon, and my nieces and nephews like their bacon super, super, super crisp, very near black. Um, my husband would be happy if it was just slightly warmed and <laughs> still kind of oinking at him. All right, so we're going to chop it. Up. I'll chop it. One thing about when it's this crisp, you don't have to do a lot of work to crumble it. Now, oh, this is just too little, a little too black. I'll take some of this. You guys are going to be happy with that, aren't you? <laughs> um, now you can use uh, if you get if you have sausage and you want to crumble it and cook it. You can use sausage. Um, you could use chopped Canadian bacon, um, chopped ham. You can use whatever cheese you want. I'm using an extra sharp cheddar. Um, I would prefer it actually with like a pepper pepper jack cheese and Canadian bacon and egg white with a little bit of chopped spinach in it. You can add onion. You can add anything you want to this. We are going to, um, where did my bagel seasoning go? Did I put that away already? We're going to sprinkle the top with everything, with everything bagel seasoning. So, and normally you'd spread the top of this with butter, but we're going to just use spray because um, I, there's a lot of fat in this already. Everyone, the breakfast bombs are out of the oven. Um, this was our one that had the little, it was uh, too thin and it, it leaked through. Um, you can let them cool for a few minutes. I'm just in the interest of time going to take them out. Um, first, we're going to make a little side here. We're going to do some orange wedges with it. Um, breakfast bombs are pretty rich with the um, cheese and the egg and all of that. You can have a few little red grapes there. That would be nice. Um, and these are screaming hot. So anyway, so they're golden brown and delicious. You could have one if you're especially hearty appetite. You can have two. I think my son is planning on several of these tomorrow. And then if you see the inside of them, and you got your cheese and egg and bacon. Now you can up the cheese factor and make them more gooey. Um, but that's what that that's a breakfast spot and they're pretty tasty um, and If you do them, I did them without the butter if you do the butter on top They get a little bit more shiny and stuff So I hope you enjoy these breakfasts whatever occasion you use them for to make them for yourself or for a loved one 
Um, they're good make ahead and a day of. You can cook for a group without slaving over a stove. Thanks guys and have a great day.